Okay, we just left uh, Kwai Mahokhwa. We have just left Kwai Mahokhwa. The first few days in Marimi is spent at Mohoto Campsite. Mohoto Campsite is one of three community-run campsites in the area. So I just want to talk a little bit about water crossings in this area. You've got to be really careful because there's very shallow waters, but in the middle it seems to make a deep channel for a couple of meters. So always walk these water crossings, but be very careful because they're full of crocodiles. I had a spade and I felt a little bit brave with my spade, but in all honesty I wouldn't have been able to do much if a crocodile had come. So take caution, don't do water crossings un unless you have to. Just done this water crossing. Uh, we checked four different water crossings and this seemed to be the the narrowest and the, the less likely to get stuck. So we had no option but we had to come through a water crossing and uh, this was pretty deep. Eh? I hope you got that. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm just looking at water dripping out of everywhere. No water came into the inside of the landy, so I'm pretty chuffed about that. But uh, to be honest, it's a little bit irresponsible. You've got to be careful out here because these water crossings, especially in the middle where the water flows, there's a bit of a channel. So it's quite a lot deeper. This was probably about 1.2 meters deep um, at the deepest point, but it was probably the shallower of the four channels that I've walked. Okay, if you look carefully, you can actually see the height of the water on the door. So it got up to about here at the rear. You can see it's been up to about here. Don't know if it's coming through on the camera. It's a little bit higher than what they recommend, but we honestly didn't have a choice, so we made it. I did pray a lot just before we went through because it's a bit nerve-wracking. And... Uh, I'm so impressed because I probably wouldn't have done that in my old Defender, to be honest with you, the one third. But uh, at least uh, all the dirt is washed off. The car's looking much cleaner, more presentable. <laughs> and we're through. Now it's time for a drink to calm my nerves because we like a bit shaky. <laughs> Thank you. 
we then had the most amazing leopard sighting. But unfortunately, it was spoiled by all the game viewers that were actually pushing down trees and driving through the bush to try and encircle these leopard that had had a kill up in a tree. We were, however, very lucky because all, all their chasing and driving through the bush scared the leopard towards us and we had an excellent interaction with them for a short time. The one game viewer with a single tourist on the back almost actually even drove over the one leopard that was lying under a bush because he hadn't even seen the leopard where it was lying. It was ridiculous. I actually felt quite sorry for the leopard to be honest. It actually became so unpleasant that we decided to leave. So we decided to take a drive and find a nice quiet spot next to the river and set up the awning and just sit and relax. We were also not in a concession area or the national park so we're able to put the drone up and give you a little bit of a bird's eye view of our surroundings. There are so many tracks around the campsite that uh, you could actually spend the whole day driving around and uh, not do the same tracks twice.
We've just left Kwai Mahoto and on our way to Third Bridge. A nice campsite, but you've got to be careful which stands you choose because there are a lot of tour operators that go through there. I mean, in the morning, there's basically a traffic jam of tour operators going through the campsites. Uh, 50 meters from where you camp and if you're on the wrong campsites you're going to be covered in dust every morning um, so try and get campsites away from the river somebody did give me this information before but uh, unfortunately we weren't able to choose for some reason and all the campsites that are away from the river seem to be taken up by tour operators a few years ago we were, while traveling in Mozambique we noticed some children playing soccer with rolled up plastic bags, rolled into a ball shape. They were having the best of times. This sparked the idea for an initiative called Chasing Smiles, where we collect soccer balls before our trips and then we hand them out along the way. There's no formal process to doing this, we just sort of stop when we feel like it and give it to kids that we think will appreciate it. The initiative is called Chasing Smiles. Until recently it's been self-funded, but we have started announcing it on social media in order to hopefully inspire others to do the same. Okay, we've just uh, entered into Marimi National Park. We stopped for some tourists. And the sand driver, you've got to be so careful. Like, to... Jeepers. You see, they don't know how to drive in sand, so they almost have a head-on collision with you. Instead of just taking it slow. Eh? That's why it's better just to stop. Anyway, just be careful when you're in this area that there's a lot of tourists that aren't used to driving in sand. And uh, that lady there, or those two ladies in that uh, rental vehicle, had full lock and the car was still going straight towards us. Unfortunately, it did eventually grip and change lanes, but uh, they don't seem to slow down. I don't know what the rush is, maybe there's an emergency. Okay, just a note on sand driving. When you come up to vehicles, just slow down a little bit because it is unpredictable. And then if you've got a high middleman and you're battling to cross that middleman, don't keep turning because what you're doing is you're actually just dragging your wheels across the sand like that. The best way to do it is if you if you just do like jerky moments like that then what happens is the car actually climbs onto the middle maniki and then you can actually turn that woman was like uh, fortunately we were totally stopped um, but she had turned full lock left and her tires were just going straight like this and uh, about a meter and a half in front of us she decided to hit the brakes and then it climbed the middle maniki and went across thank goodness I'm not sure what a rush was, maybe she's got an emergency or something. But anyway, just be aware that there are a lot of people that don't know how to drive in sand. And if you don't know how to drive in sand, that's fine. Just practice climbing up onto the middle maniki by swerving like that. And you'll see it actually climbs very easily. If you turn slowly, it won't climb in a lot of cases, especially if the middle maniki is high. So just give it a quick swerve and then you see it goes straight on top. Easy. But anyway. We are in Moremi, we are on our way to Southgate. Apparently Second Bridge is being damaged, so we can't go to Second Bridge. Um, and there's quite a deep water crossing, and I, I don't like doing water crossings with the trailer, because obviously that just reduces your chances of doing a clean crossing, because you've got this big anchor behind you. But uh, yeah, let's hope that my brother's sitting at Southgate waiting for us, um, and that he hasn't chickened out. <laughs> Heath hadn't chickened out and he was ready and waiting for us in his Discovery 5 star at Southgate. <laughs> the Conquer trailer had started to bounce and rock around a lot more than it had done on the beginning of the trip. So I was a little bit worried. And as a brand new trailer at the start of the trip, I didn't think anything too drastic was wrong. But more on that later.
when driving between camps in this park. Treat your drive as if it's a game drive and take it slow and easy. Many of these bridges cannot handle high speeds and abuse and many of them have been damaged already so we've got to treat them with care. The trailer had started to rock even worse than it had before. So we stopped, checked everything, nothing seemed loose and we carried on. The staff were really friendly and the check-in process was very efficient. We were ecstatic with our campsite number nine, away from the crowds and away from the main camp. Yes, it looks amazing, eh? It does. What kind of witchery is that? <laughs> <laughs> The lions carried on all night, so we decided to have an early morning start and go and see if we could find them. Within two kilometers of leaving Third Bridge, we found them, six brothers who had taken down a giraffe. When we eventually decided to leave, the vulture, the monkey and the jackal were still watching from a safe distance and the male who had been sleeping next to the pond had woken up to check if his prize was still there.
After watching as much of the sunset as possible, we quickly headed back to the camp before it got dark and started the fire. So Heath, what do you think of these lions in the campsite? Yeah, bloody brilliant. I like that they keep walking past that way. <laughs> Been interesting, huh? I mean, we were sitting here in pitch darkness. You were saying, oh, there's a wild boar, and the next thing is three <laughs> lions come walking out. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, that was that was spectacular. I was trying to get into your caravan. The zip <laughs> couldn't move. It was stuck in some Velcro. I think you need to kind of move that a little bit higher. Um, and then my next exit plan was to get into your boot. And unfortunately, that's packed with so much stuff that I wouldn't have been able to fit in there. So I just literally sat here. I don't know, mumbling something or other and stood with my back against your caravan. But, but it was fun. It was beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> beautiful. That was what was making that noise. You think so? Keep turn what? your torch down. As we sat down to eat, we had another visitor, probably who smelt the meat, but I've never seen heat sit so still in my life. <laughs> well, he comes here for water from that tent. I'm always on about camping etiquette and another thing about camping etiquette is wood comes wrapped with wire and I've been picking up this wire all over the place so I just want to ask people to throw it away take make a little bit of effort and put it with your rubbish because that can get caught around the animal and you know obviously do some serious damage to them So this is Discovery 5 Star Camping. My brother, who's a newbie to this sort of, you know, he's cleaning his sand and sticker. I'm going to show you. This is my bed. There's a single bed. Go for it, Heath. These are my lights here. My kitchen pantry. Medicine. Snacks. Bog roll. <laughs> 10 liters of water. What's that tripod thing there next to you? Uh, that's to look at the moon. Oh, okay. And then if you come along this side. See, so you even upgraded the wheels. Took off the fancy 22 inch wheels and put these wheels on. This is my uh, clothing, my hanger in the back here to keep my jackets nice and straight. Your brand jacket sorry, here. Sorry, the mess. <laughs> and then if you come around this side, yeah. And he's dressed for the beach, not the bush. Um, <laughs> you've got your kitchen drawer that's got everything in it. So when you're driving there, you've got water, camera, Barnox, medical kit, and your cap. And that's a real scented <laughs> cap. <laughs>
This male was clearly distressed where his brothers were and uh, kept calling them but they didn't reply. I think they were all lying in the bushes with full bellies. The jackal and the vultures were still watching him. Every now and then they'll take a step closer and then chicken out and run away again. <coughs> Being only a few meters away from this male lion, you could actually feel his roar vibrating through your body. It was actually quite spectacular and amazing. Something I've never experienced in all my years of traveling in Southern Africa. He eventually gave up and quite disgusted that his brothers weren't answering him. He went and to look for them. The jackals and the vultures took their opportunity to get their bellies full. Good evening. Hi, good evening. How are you? I'm good at you. Good, thanks. Yes. Good evening. 
Smile for the camera. Hi, Bruce. Hi, Bruce. <laughs> How are you? Good, good. Did you see the lions? Yes. Are they still there? Um, I think so. Okay. In camp that age. Yeah. Okay. Why are you shy now? Me. You're looking shy now because there's a camera. Because of the camera. Have a nice evening, eh? Okay, so this is why you've got to be careful in your campsites at Third Bridge. There's four of these lines that we can see, but we know there's six. So, but we've only seen four. So wish us luck. It's going to be a noisy night, I think. So these guys, there's three of them that we can see so far. You might see the building in the background that's a toilet. But these guys are 80 meters, maybe 100 meters from our campsite. Okay, I'm not going to stop these guys in shape. They're youngsters, eh? Mm. Okay, I'm standing in the middle of the campsite and there's three lions, probably about 80 meters away. One over there. <laughs> one over there, you just see the round lump. See his ears fiddling and then one to the left around there. So always be vigilant when you're in these campsites. We then decided to book a boat trip, something that you should do when you're in the Okavango. Isaac, our boat captain, took us on this most amazing journey, which we thoroughly enjoyed. Heath had found this place quite close to the gate that was perfect to go and watch the sun go down. It had a little pan and it was quite spectacular. Okay, so if you have a look carefully, you should be able to see the lion footprints. Just came through the campsite, down the road, and there's our campsite. So, when camping like this, you always need to stay vigilant. Because these sort of situations can turn nasty. It doesn't often happen, but it can. The big female that came through here now. Those people making a noise, they're oblivious to what's happening. So I might get a nasty surprise. Our noisy neighbours carried on well into the night, oblivious to everything that was happening around them, but thankfully early the next morning they left. Although they did leave a pile of rubbish on the campsite that the lions later guarded. The 
campsites come alive when the lights go out and you go to bed. So we set up the camera trap to see what visitors we had when the lights were out. After a few spectacular days at this campsite, we had to leave. We headed for Southgate, but on the way we decided to take a small detour to see how much of the giraffe carcass was left. Okay, after about two days, that's all that's left of a giraffe. Quite scary actually, and I'm sure there's more to be eaten tonight. There is nothing better than travelling like this. Varying terrain, water crossings, animals, tracks, sand. It's absolutely spectacular. When I got back to Johannesburg, I had the trailer fully checked and it turns out that the tough dog shock absorbers had both failed and that is why the trailer was bouncing around so much later in this trip. If you watch now, you'll see how it bounces. Fortunately, Conqueror replaced them under warranty. Okay, so we've just left uh, Moremi, where we had an amazing stay at Third Bridge. I must just say, the staff there are absolutely brilliant. So, right now we're heading to Nata, and then we're going to head to... Um, we're probably going to stay at Nata Bird Sanctuary tonight, or Nata Lodge. We'll see how we feel when we get there. And then we will head to Kukunya Island. And uh, I'm sure most of you will be saying, Kukunya Island, never heard of it. Um, well, I'll show you what it looks like. It's uh, one of those little known places that hardly anyone visits. And I actually don't know why. I think uh, people prefer the rocks at the Kubla Island, the rocks at the Baobabs, where uh, Kukunya Island is more of an open plain with a couple of Baobabs on it. You'll see what that looks like. So that should be interesting. And then we're going to head down the cut lines all the way down uh, on the southern part of Central Kalahari Game Reserve. We'll see where we stay for the next two or three nights and then head back to Joburg, unfortunately, and uh, go, go back to our normal day jobs. So 
other thing I wanted to say is that uh, I met so many people so far on this trip that uh, are watching the channel, that watch, uh, you know, follow on Facebook and all of these things. And I tell you what, I'm actually overwhelmed. It's absolutely awesome. And I want to thank all of you for coming and saying hello and saying, I watch your channel. I saw your Zimbabwe episode. I saw all of this. It really, really, really makes me feel good. Maybe it's good for the ego. I don't know. But it's so nice to meet everybody. And uh, I hope you... All of you that came and visited me and sort of said hello to me along the way, I gave you all stickers, so I hope you haven't thrown them in the dustbin. <laughs> but, uh, you know, the one lady asked me, why do you actually do this YouTube stuff? You know, and I said, well, it started out originally as a record sort of for my own personal family and uh, friends, and it's kind of grown from there. Um, and I realized on this episode, on this, not this episode, this trip, why I do it and it's because of all of you guys it's so great meeting all of you guys and you know meeting other youtubers from South Africa I'm not a youtuber yet I'm getting there but I'm not yet but you know meeting other youtubers from South Africa and uh, from Botswana and you know even a couple from Zimbabwe that I've met so thank you all for the support um, it's absolutely awesome next episode, we meet up with Tyron and Cameron from Adventure with Togs, who decide to join us on some cut lines and to Kukunya Island. <laughs> make a rookie mistake, Heath and I need to get rescued. Thankfully Tyron and Cameron come to the rescue. Thank you for watching. Until next time. <laughs>